Yo, welcome to Simply Bitcoin Live. You're a number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution with code-breaking news, culture, matic warfare. We will be your guide through the separation of money and state. Today, we're going to cover a topic that we haven't covered in quite a bit of time. We're going to cover central bank digital currencies and their latest plan and attempt to try to replace Bitcoin. You know, in the thumbnail, I trolled a little bit. I said, we lost, it's over because that's what they keep saying. They keep saying, you know, Bitcoin law, Augustin Carson said this last week, right? Bitcoin loss, it's over, pack it up, go home. Man, are they so wrong. And we're gonna cover as to why we believe they are wrong on today's show. Really, uh, we have some details and not only that, like we have the their plans or their proposals of how their CBDC is going to work. And you'll see like, it is so ancient, this, this type of system. But I think really what they're trying to do is they're trying to justify their existence, right? The internet exists, peer to peer exist. And what I, what I think we're witnessing is the intermediaries are saying, hey, you still need intermediaries. Like you still need us. And I think that's very reminiscent of a lot of companies during the early internet. Right. A lot of companies had that, you know, I think Barnes and Nobles is a good example. Blockbuster is a good example and how and how the Internet completely changed the playing field extremely quickly to companies that you think would never go away. Right. And I think Bitcoin is going to do that to banking specifically um, and central banking specifically, which happens to be a major source of power for world governments. Right. So the stage is set and Bitcoin, Bitcoiners, if you're taking self-custody, are watching on the sideline eating popcorn like that meme. Anyways, I want to start the show. First, I want to welcome very special guest, Away Slice. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. You're bringing the energy this morning. <laughs> Thanks, man. Got it. Happy to have you on the show. And of course, my legendary co-host, always optimistic. He wakes up even in the middle of the night. If he wakes up from his sleep, he wakes up and he has a smile on his face. Smile 24-7. That's, that's fake news. That's that fake news. That is who Optimus Fields is. <laughs> I am the worst when I wake up. This is truth. Uh, I need a moment. I need to come out of my slumber. But yeah, man. Uh, not only to your news, Nico, we are seeing some crazy stuff in all markets right now. I couldn't be happier to be a Bitcoiner right now. Yeah, the price is kind of, you know, hovering a little under 20K. But man, where else are you going to be parking your money right now <laughs> in this time? In this occasion, it is going to be cr I think this maybe not this weekend, but this next week is going to be absolutely bananas. And I mean, we still have this uh, legacy media out here telling us that Bitcoin is dead and Bitcoin's been defeated. And it's like <laughs> they haven't seen anything yet. They haven't seen anything yet. And yes, we will we will spend a lot of time covering the fireworks or, you know, the potential. I think everyone kind of sees there's a lot. There's a lot of activity on Twitter. There's a lot of people talking. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, culture. We got a waste slice. So, hey, while the world burns around you, we're going to teach you how to cook a good steak so that you can at least eat good. I know Bitcoiners love to eat steak and we have a master chef on tonight. So or today we're going to talk all things steak, guys. This guy's the steak master, bro. If Mandrake is the ba baklava master, this guy's the steak master. He is baklava. the. <laughs> he is the baklava master. He is. He is. Mandrake is a legend. So it's beefsteak. Anyways, everybody, let's get to the news. Let's do this. Uh, no, let's get to the numbers. Let's do this. <laughs> the Bitcoin numbers. Brought to you by Noddle. At this point, you should be running your own Bitcoin node. If you don't use your own Bitcoin node, you're trusting someone else's. Run your own version of Bitcoin Core, the Lightning Network, Whirlpool, and Dojo, all from the comfort of your own home. And... If you're a digital nomad, you have absolutely no excuse because now you can run a Noddle through a virtual private server. Visit noddle.eu today. All right, everybody else, I want to tell you about the biggest Bitcoin conference on the face of the earth, Bitcoin 2023. It's going to be hosted in sunny, sunny Miami Beach, Florida, May 18th through the 20th, 2023. You can use promo code SIMPLY to get a 10% discount on your tickets to Bitcoin 2023. You definitely don't want to miss it. You guys know the deal. We go through the speaker list every single day because they they continuously add new speakers. Of course, right now we have 
And there we go. We have Michael Lewis, Arthur Hayes, Michael Saylor, Jack Maulers, Casey, creator of Ordinals, Alex Gladstein, Stacey Herbert, Preston Pish, Greg Foss, Odell, Lynn Alden, and many, many more. You definitely don't want to miss the biggest Bitcoin celebration on the face of the earth. Bitcoin 2023 promo code simply at the time of recording the Bitcoin price is 19,928 stats per dollar 5,019 block height 780,167 reachable Bitcoin nodes 16,099 blocks to the halving 59,833 having estimate April 22nd 2024 total lightning network capacity 5,374 Bitcoin capacity value 107 million US dollars realized monetary inflation 1.76 percent and the market capitalization of Bitcoin is 384 billion dollars with a B anyways uh I, I want to go over uh this <laughs> you know what I will let these awesome Bitcoiners describe it better than I can, right? So this is Jan Pritzker. He is the he's a co-founder of Swan. It says you can leave your fate, and what is he referring to? So Bloomberg Markets posted a a clip, which we're going to play in a, in a couple seconds. It said Senator Elizabeth Warren says about two million people will lose their jobs as a result of the Fed's anticipated monetary tightening. She asked Jerome Powell to explain why these people must lose their jobs as part of the effort to bring down inflation. Jan Pritzker says, you can leave your fate in the hands of people debating how to best screw you over by making it unaffordable to buy things or make you lose your job or opt out and start saving in Bitcoin. We have Alan Farrenting that says, the fiat mindset in a nutshell. Warren doesn't have any idea or even care about what causes employment. She just wants everybody to have job, all prices to be low, and all unicorns to be happy. And, I, you know, Yan Pritzker's comments really resonate with people. It re really resonates with me specifically because it's like, yeah, like this is why we're here. Opt out or deal with this fiat madness. Anyways, let's check out the clip of Powell and then we'll talk about it. If you continue raising interest rates as you plan, unemployment will be 4.6% by the end of the year. It's, it's not just an a intended consequence. It's well, not but it is, and it's in your report, and that would be about 2 million people. If you could speak directly to the 2 million who you're planning to get fired over the next year, what would you say to them? Inflation is extremely high, and it's hurting the working people of this country badly, all of them not just two million of them. And we are taking the, the only measures we have to bring inflation down. And putting two million people out of work is just part of the cost and they just have to bear it? Will, they, will, will working people be better off if, if we just walk away from our jobs and, and inflation remains well, five, six percent? It's not as black and white as it, it very, just very Just looking at the numbers, it actually yeah, no, is no. pretty black Alan Bliner's white. written a book on this. And, there have and, been 12 times yeah. that we've seen a one point increase in the, in the unemployment rate in a year. How many times did the economy fail to fall into a recession after doing that, out of 12 times. I think the number is zero. I think the number is zero. That's exactly right. Right now, the unemployment rate is 3.4%, which is the lowest in 54 years. And we actually don't think that we need to see a sharp or enormous increase in unemployment to get inflation under control. I, I, Even 4.5% unemployment is is well better than than most of the time for the last you know 75 years. Dude. Central planners, central planning, man. Central planners, central planning. That's absolutely nuts. I'm happy. My wealth, my time, my energy is in Bitcoin. If it's not in Bitcoin, that's where it's at. <laughs> like straight up. Like that conversation matters to you, right? And you know, this is this is fiat money. Like politics are important in this. It's just absolutely crazy that this single man has that much power. Right. They printed too much money. Now, basically, they have to cool down the economy. A potential effect of that is people losing their jobs. And they're just talking about it willy nilly. Like this is this is the world of fiat. Like this is this is why we opt out. This is what the peaceful revolution is all about. And yeah, man, this is absolutely bonkers to me. Opti, what are your thoughts? And then we'll move on to waste slice. Well, first and foremost, my uh, my Austrian economist in my head just like completely just blew up because, you know, Liz Warren's just real bad at economics, period. And the fact that she's focusing on like a small sector of the economy, it just kind of shows like 
that this is all an emotional play. You know, she needs to read uh, Economics in One Lesson and just read like the first paragraph, guys. I, I say it all the time. Read the first chapter of Economics in One Lessons and you'll understand the fallacies that these politicians always fall into. But I mean, to her point, though, uh, the Fed and Jay Powell manipulating the supply of money does, in fact, hurt all of us, not just a small number of people. And as we're seeing right now in real time, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Jay Powell may have blown up the economy. Like, she's not that wrong. It's just going to hurt a lot more of us by them trying to stop inflation. Uh, they may have done a lot more damage. So kind of to your point, central planner, central planning. So we are seeing this contagion play out in real time right now. And I think we're going to see a lot of fireworks next week. Like I said in the beginning of the show, we're seeing bank runs happening in real time as we speak. So... I mean, I just wouldn't want to have any money in any banks right now. This is why I'm a Bitcoiner. This is why I am unironically on zero fiat. And I just don't trust banks. And as we're seeing, uh, the legacy system is is, is on – what's, a, what's the, the medical thing? On life support. You know, like it's on life support right now. And hey, man, the best time to be in Bitcoin was yesterday, but the second best time is right now. Make sure you're taking your Bitcoin into self-custody because I think we are in for, as, as a whole, as a society, a lot of pain. I think the global economy is going to finally snap back to reality, and we're going to see this play out in the next couple of days. I mean, we're just seeing one of the one of the biggest banks collapse since the Great Recession today. And like, yo, I think I think it kind of has to do with central planner central planning. I don't know, just color me shocked. Yeah, Opti's gonna start dropping the macro tweets from his Twitter. Check it out. Um, no, no, no. That's <laughs> shout out to Dylan. <laughs> Anyways, a way slice. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, man? Do you, do, you, do you see the madness that we see? I mean, for sure, this is me veering out of my lane a little bit, but it, it is insane to watch however long that clip was, a minute and a half or whatever. I mean, that is just, it is insane. Both of those people are insane. <laughs> and uh, and it's uh, it, see, it feels disingenuous for Jay Powell to say that they're not, trying to raise unemployment rates because they very much are concerned that unemployment rates are not going up right and they're just going to keep raising interest rates hoping that people lose jobs as a result of it because that's the that's one of their markers of it working um and, and that's just it's like going to war and being like it war is not working unless people are dying right um and and of course no one wants people to die, but we're still going to war, right? So it just feels shitty all around. And then, like, I just, I just, I have a innate distrust of politicians. So when I hear Elizabeth Warren speak, it's like this, like, nails on a chalkboard adult from Charlie Brown sound that comes out of her mouth to me. And I just, I don't <laughs> trust anything that she says. I don't believe, you know, for a second that she gives a shit about anyone's job. I think she is like, up there talking to her voters not to jerome powell when she's saying those things but uh that sound that, that that feels a little pessimistic all around but that's just my take on her yeah no, I, I, and i 100 percent agree with you I, I don't think it's pessimistic at all i think i think it's the truth now always like the question that i have for you is are we thinking this because we're bitcoiners like, are we thinking this because we're on a Bitcoin standard? So we're seeing this and we're like, this is so unnecessary. This is so ridiculous. You know, are we are we seeing it from that perspective? And that's why we feel this way. I mean, I don't it's it's we might as individuals be a little bit insulated from whatever the consequences of the decisions they're making. Right. But but we're not. It's still going to affect us. You know, it's like it's going to make neighborhoods more dangerous. It's going to make schools are going to fall off cliffs you know they're going to people are going to lose funding taxes are going to go down you know like they're going to all be all these secondary and tertiary effects of these decisions they're making and they're going to affect us and our children um so he, everyone bitcoiner or not should be paying attention to that and be critical of the decisions they're making i, I do think that like if i didn't have bitcoin I would feel kind of hopeless hearing that. Um, and I think that that's, you know, like some people are like people that are unemployed and don't have jobs, you know, it, it's easy to think that they're lazy, but at the same time, it's like, why would I, 
why would I do some shitty job that where I can't retain my value? You know, you're going to take 30% of what I'm going to earn. And then the other 70% you're going to devalue at 6% a year for the, like, fuck you. Like I'd rather just stay home. Um, it, you know, it, it, yeah, it could it be laziness. Yeah. But it's also almost more efficient, you know, like just, um, it's like a different form of opting out though. It's hopeless, right? Like it's not like just not working. It's just as a hopeless thing. And I think Bitcoin kind of gives me hope and keeps me engaged. And it's the reason that I continue to like get up and do things. A hundred percent. Also, I, I have kids and stuff like I get up and, and do stuff for my kids. <laughs> Wait, Nico, before we move on, uh, Oasis just kind of hit on something that we talk about all the times. And, and it's just the, the broken incentive structure of the fiat system like he, he just laid it out perfectly and i've said it in the past as well like bitcoin in my personal life has also been like the great motivator is like i i did feel nihilism in the traditional world and and kind of had that idea of like yo well, what's the point of all this and now i have bitcoin and i realize like yo there is hope at the end of the tunnel and we can turn this around and further i think it's going to be upon us to turn this around and i hate to say that bitcoin is the purpose but you know getting people on the hard money standard i think is a purposeful endeavor so this is why we do what we do a hundred percent. I 100 percent agree with you. All right, man, let's get to the news. Lots to talk about. Let's do it. The Daily News brought to you by Blockstream Jade, built by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners. It's an open source hardware wallet for the cold storage of Bitcoin. Blockstream Jade houses a full color camera, allowing for fully air gapped Bitcoin transactions. Scan and display QR codes directly on the device to sign transactions and verify addresses with ease. Use your Blockstream Jade with your favorite wallet software, such as the Blockstream Green, Blue Wallet, Electrum, and Sparrow. Get yourself a Blockstream Jade today and the future of, of money right here. This is the man behind it, the genius. Um, anyways, in all seriousness, uh, let's cover what I wanted to talk about today is the Bank of International Settlements says hub and spoke cross-border transfers offer benefits to retail central bank digital currencies. When they talk about retail, they mean you. Anyways, um, unless we haven't basically done an episode on CBDCs for quite a bit. So make no mistake, governments all around the world and this AtlanticCouncil.org CBDC tracker does a great job at visualizing what is I'm about to talk about, but governments all around the world are placing their hopes and dreams of being able to maintain the privilege of creating money for free that everyone else has to work for. And they're putting all of those hopes into central bank digital currencies. And they're hoping you won't notice. They're hoping that you won't notice the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is that people are opting out of state money because of inflation. They're not opting out of state money because they want better payment. And if you live in a country that has financial privilege, shout out to Alex Gladstein, most, more than likely you have a very, very efficient and good payment platform in your country. We live in the United States. So in the United States, there's Cash App, there's Venmo, there's PayPal, there's Zelle. There's a bunch of them and they make moving, moving money digitally from person to person extremely efficient, very easy, specifically if it's low amounts of money, right? It's like if it's under, you know, you know, two, three, four, five K, you know, there's tons of places that could do it and tons of apps, right. That are not from the government, right. Into private companies. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, why are they so hell bent on CBDCs? Well, the reason's obvious, right? They see Bitcoin. They're like, we want to remain relevant as time progresses. I don't think they'll be able to hide the inflation aspect. And I think in Nigeria, for example, um, the adoption of Bitcoin versus the adoption of the CBDC that they tried to roll out. Um, and coincidentally, the United Nations recommended that, said we must de-incentivize the adoption of, quote, crypto in developing countries. Our recommendation is attack the on and off ramps, make regulation hostile, and also let's roll out CBDCs. Well, it looks like their CBDC plan isn't working. And why isn't it working? Because the incentive for a Nigerian to opt out of state money if there's double digit inflation is through the roof. Right. And then if you compare that with, uh, you know, people that live in countries that have relatively stable fiat currencies and develop financial rails, the incentive is not quite there. 
right? But it doesn't mean that the same grift isn't happening, right? It's just, you know, it's not that noticeable when it's like, what, four, five, six percent versus 25, 20, 30 percent. In the case of Argentina, 99 percent. Um, anyways, so let's get to it. So central bank digital currency tracker and Oh man, last time I was here, there was a map. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, um, let's get, let's go through some of the countries, right? You have the United States, the status is development, right? You have the Bahamas launched the case retail. You have Mexico research, you have Costa Rica and active, you have Brazil development, you have Venezuela development, you have Europe, you know, the EU it's being developed as well. The UK, right? Uh, Australia, there's a pilot. So it's already been launched in, in Australia, in China, there's a pilot, right? In Russia, there's a pilot, you know, so like, take this seriously. It's happening all around the world. When we're talking about CBDCs, like they're happening. They, they, they want this to happen. Now, what is the B, what is the bank of international settlements? Uh, you know, what is their theory of the case? How do they propose that we roll out these CBDCs. So it says Bank of International Settlement says hub and spoke cross-border transfers offer benefits to retail CBDC. The Bank of International Settlements, an organization of the world's leading central banks, that sounds scary. I said, and it's like, when, it, when, when I read that, just picture this guy looking at you. Anyways, uh, said the cross-border payment model for the central bank digital currency or CBDC it explored in Project Icebreaker. Project Icebreaker, coming for Bitcoin, offers benefits to both the banks and retail customers, according to a report on Monday. The project, which was co conducted with the help of the central banks of Israel, Norway, and Sweden, used a so-called hub-and-spoke method to connect between the country's different national central banks digital currency system. A retail, a retail CBDC is a digital currency issued by a central bank that can be used for payments by consumers. In the hub and spoke process, a, cr a cross-border transaction is broken down into two domestic payment payment facilities, uh, payments facilitated by a foreign exchange provider active in both countries. That sounds a lot more complicated than Bitcoin. That gives central banks almost complete control over their CBDCs while allowing competitive quotes for the exchange rate to be submitted to the hub so that end users can benefit from the best rate. Or you could just use Bitcoin. Quote, the competitive setup mitigates the risk of insufficient liquidity in the desired currency pair, which can drive up fees and even delay the transaction, the Bank of International Settlement said. The project also demonstrated that the hub and spoke model can reduce settlement and counterparty risk by using coordinated payments in central bank money and complete cross-border transactions within seconds. Many central banks are looking to issue a CBDC within 10 years. Nigeria, Bahamas, Eastern Caribbean, and Jamaica have already issued one, and China is further ahead than most countries with its CBDC trials. The group of 20 industrialized nations has made exploring cross-border payment systems a priority and project icebreaker was a response to g20's call to action the report said the bank of international settlements has conducted other successful cbdc cross-border experiments such as project dunbar which focus on wholesale use and money transfers between banks for the hub and spoke model to work, every CBDC system involved needs to operate 24 seven and have a hash time locked contract, which is a form of smart contract and a program that automatically execute transactions when triggered. Quote, implementing the icebreaker model in the real world would require a range of technology, policy and legal considerations to be addressed. The report said, quote, policy considerations could include the government government's arrangement, the viability of the business model, liquidity provision, privacy and AML slash CFTC, anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism, compliance and monitoring and payment initiation related standards, initiation pay, uh, standards. Anyways, so much, so much BS. It's so much BS. Now, again, so I want to talk about the hub and spoke model for a second, right? So we have point to point, you could say peer to peer, right? Point to point versus hub and spoke networks, right? So point to point, you could say that's peer to peer. And here's a hub and spoke, right? For, uh, for, you know, our audio listeners, right? There's a bunch of, you know, I guess network participants and they all have to go through the hub in order to communicate with each other. In the case of the CBDC, they all have to go through the hub, right? And this is what I mean in the very beginning of the show when I said these intermediaries are trying to justify their existence. They're trying to, hey, we need to continue to exist when there's a system 
that no longer needs that intermediation. You could say that before Bitcoin, you could say that that intermediation was necessary in order for these types of systems to work. That's clearly not the case anymore, but I just find it hilarious how they try to dress it up with badass names like Project Icebreaker, Project Dunbar, um, you know, uh, has all these technicalities. Look at us, right? And then the Bitcoin white paper is what, nine pages, right? And it just does it better. Just does it better. And remember, CBDCs will never, never solve the problem of inflation. It will never solve that. Governments will always want to control and they're always going to want to debase. And that is the point that we must highlight. Like when we're discussing CBDCs, don't discuss whatever technical bullshit or efficiency of payments. You know, they're going to say, oh, this is more efficient than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is burning the planet, boiling the oceans. Just focus on the fact that, hey, I'm using Bitcoin because I want my money to not only maintain in purchasing power, but actually increase in purchasing power. And if I use your CBDC, that's not going to help me solve that problem because that's going to put them in a back foot and they need to answer that. Why are we being forced to use a money that steals from us? Why? And that's the big million dollar question. And I think they're going to do everything in their power to avoid answering that question. Anyways, uh, Opti, I'm going to pass it on to you. But before I do that, let me... Uh, let me let me put this up while you talk. Uh, all right, it's all yours, my friend. <laughs> uh, well, my my uh, only real comment on this the the fact that they're calling this the hub and spoke model, it just sounds very centralized. Remember, they were trying to tell us the other day that their CBDC will be decentralized and all this stuff, but. I don't know. I, maybe I am just highly regarded, but this hub and spoke model sounds uh, very similar to the model that we are currently in right now. Very centralized, having a central point of failure, and literally Bitcoin fixes this. So, in my opinion, kind of bringing everything down or back to what is actually happening in other markets, not just in the Bitcoin market, it's almost as if they're burning down the current system to push us into this dystopian China-based uh, social credit system, right? Hearts out loud. This is why we tell you guys to opt into Bitcoin, take Bitcoin into self-custody, do not leave anything on exchanges, and watch the fireworks, guys. Like We have the solutions to the problems. What they try to offer to us are not the solutions. They are offering the problem so that they can give you their solution, but we have the solution. And I think it's going to become very evident that Bitcoiners are right. We continue to be right. Bitcoin's incentives are, are right. And I think this, this year is going to be a very important year in regards to not only watching the financial system blow up, but also seeing where corporate press incentives really lie. Yeah, 100%. Away Slice, what are your thoughts on this, bro? Again, this is me. You guys are crushing it, by the way. This is me veering way out of my lane. But, uh, but just going back to that, going back to the jerome powell statement and their thoughts like they are they know that they're just straight up running out of moves right like they don't there's no more room for quantitative easing like they they, they we have to like face the face the music right now i guess for lack of a better way to put it and having a cbdc gives them another bag of tricks right like because because right now they can't control inflation because we can control our money you know it, even though it doesn't really feel that way like we can spend our dollars how we want to like if if we switch over to a cbdc like we won't have that option we there could be saving restrictions. There could be like CBDCs could expire. Like it'll force us to spend, right? Um, it, it could just like completely take away our ability to save money. Um, so I have to think that those people in power, you know, like I hate to say like the proverbial they because it makes it sound like a conspiracy. Like they're out of options, and the CBDC is is their next step. Um, and like, and then again, the same thing as with Powell, like the only thing that kind of gives me hope is Bitcoin. Um, 
because it is a money that we can permanently take control of and know that we will retain control of it regardless of what the dollar value is yesterday or today. Um, 100%. And, and I think that all we can do is like encourage people to adopt Bitcoin and, and try to teach them to use it, take control of it and, you know, be a little bit, at least a little bit privacy conscious and do the best they can because, you know, I, I fully believe that if a CBDC becomes a thing, you know, it's not going to be a choice. Like it, it's going to be our money when it, when it becomes our money, you know, it'll just be, it'll just be how we spend money. I mean, you won't be able to, I mean, already you can't really get a bunch of dollars out of the bank if you want them. Um, there's just not enough like paper dollars in circulation. Um, so I'm sure that's, one thing they'll tell us is like it's just so much easier for these us to use a CBDC. We don't have to create all these paper dollars anymore. Um, I don't know. I think that's all I got. I think just adopt Bitcoin, stave it off a little bit. A hundred percent. Wait, hold on. They're gonna tell us you don't need the paper dollars. We have digital dollars. They're just as good, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Trust, tr Remember, guys, if if you're trusting CBDCs, this is uh. This is uh, this is who's looking at you. Anyways, guys, uh, he speaking, very speaking of the battle against CBDCs, you can only save yourself from what's to come if you take self-custody of your Bitcoin, and there's no better place to do You can't store your seed on paper. You have to store your seed on metal, and there's no better, better metal backup than Domino by BitPlates. Check it out. It's pure pure metal. It's badass. It's easy to use, hard to destroy. BitPlates Domino, Bit plates, domino plates are designed to preserve Bitcoin wallet backup seed words and, fr and passphrases made from highly corrosion resistant 316 marine grade stainless steel offering the ultimate protection against extreme temperatures. Get yours at bitplates.com today and you could use promo code simply to get a 10% discount. Anyways, we have a lot to talk about. A lot of stake stuff to talk about during the culture. Let's check it out. The Daily Culture. Brought to you by swanbitcoin.com. Swan is the best way to build your Bitcoin stack with automated Bitcoin savings plans and instant purchases, serving clients of any size from $10 to $10 million. We love Swan because they incentivize self-custody and dollar cost averaging. What are you waiting for? Visit swanbitcoin.com today. All right, also guys, I wanna tell you about a new offering from Swan. Definitely check it out. Bitcoin is generational wealth, and you can secure your bright orange future with the Swan IRA. Real Bitcoin, no taxes. Swan offers both traditional and Roth op options to best fit your needs. Create your IRA and start adding Bitcoin in less than one minute. Transfers and rollovers are available. Swan's Bitcoin experts will get you set up with no transfers fees and no minimum balance requirements. This is real Bitcoin, not an ETF or other derivative. Get the real thing and get it at Swan. Go to swan.com IRA for details, and of course, you can also send me a DM on Twitter. Anyways, Opti, it's all yours. All right. All right, guys. Well, I know uh, I've been beating the drum of uh, it's a crazy, crazy time right now. But hey, this might be our last weekend as normal citizens before we get pushed into this dystopian sin uh, system. And as you can see here on YouTube, I have the this is fine meme. So I am going to ask you to uh, tune into your inner cipher this weekend and eat some steak, enjoy yourselves and realize, hey, things are changing in real time in, in full seriousness. So we have one of my friends, Away Slice. He is an excellent chef, in my opinion, a master chef. He's taught me how to cook steak by the grill. He's taught me some 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 shortcuts and some secrets on the grill. And there's actually a really good article on Medium. Uh, it's called All You Can Hold for Five Bucks. And this is the origins of the beefsteak. But we have the beefsteak man himself. So, Away Slice. What's the where where did the beef steak or the Bitcoin beef steak signal come from? What was your initial idea in starting the beef steak? And then we're gonna give the people a little little tips and tricks out there on steak and uh, try to dig into your brain. Yeah, 
Um, so that article that you just showed was uh, in a collection of historic food articles. It's, it's this book, Historic Food Articles from the New Yorker, which has always had food articles and uh, and they just do like collections of historic food articles. So this, this book's called Secret Ingredients and this article by Joseph Mitchell was in there. And when I read that, it just kind of like clicked. Like I was just like, you know what you should do? I don't know who's doing that, but you should you should just like look at old historic beefsteak pictures. There's some really cool pictures of just like guys just like in basements of buildings and stuff. And uh, um, but it it's awesome. <clears throat> I think that when I read that when I read that article, I was just like, I want to. The first thing I thought was like, I want to experience it. And then the next thing I and then when I tried that and a bunch of them sucked, I was like, I kind of want to start to do this. And I did them for normies before beef steakers, but there was kind of like the dawn of the steak dinner for beef steak, or sorry, for Bitcoiners. It's kind of like how people started getting, getting together and doing steak dinners just, you know, when it came time to get together. Um, I hesitate to say around conferences because it was kind of like, there weren't really conferences before 2019. I mean, I guess there was Honey Badger. There was a Honey Badger in 2019. And then maybe Satoshi Roundtable. But I don't know if that really counts as a conference because I think it's invite only. I don't really, I don't really, I never really understood Satoshi Roundtable. But um, anyways, I just threw the idea out to Pierre Rochard and I was like, let's do a beefsteak. And he was like, where can we do it? And I was like, let's just do it in my backyard. And he was like, okay, let's pick a date. And so we just kind of picked a date, and he helped me get the word out to people. And he, he ran the BTC pay server for us. Um, and I just caught traction. You know, people liked it. It's like all you can eat meat. Like what's if you like if you like meat and you don't mind eating with your hands, I feel like it's kind of a no-brainer. I think the hands eating with your hands is the best part. Never having utensils there. Like when you first told me, it's like there's no utensils at the beef steak. I'm like, all right, this is different. Like, yeah, you're gonna wear you're gonna wear basically a bib the whole time, and you're washing your hands on your bib all day. Like, I was like, oh, this right. is this is my kind of place. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, I got some questions here that I know all the Bitcoiners out there are gonna ask. It's a some of them are the trending questions that that we've uh, the 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 debates that go on on Twitter. So first and foremost, away slice, cast iron or stainless steel? <laughs> uh, I think they're apples and oranges. They're just, it's just different. But I think probably for, for the vast majority of people, cast iron is better because you, you don't know it, but your stove is shitty. And uh, if you have a shitty stove, you're like the best way to make a steak is with a cast iron skillet. Because it, it just gets hot and it stays hot. Um, and you want you want it to be as hot as you can get it when you're cooking the steak because you want it to you want to get as much browning as you possibly can. Um, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry already know, thinking about I know, it. I know. All right, next question. Next one. Uh carnivore diet or carbs are good. Uh no. <laughs> This is true. There might be some carbs at a beefsteak. Do not cancel them. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I am not anti carnivore diet, but I, I am not, uh, I am not personally a carnivore, and I, and I don't ever intend for someone to like think that the beefsteak is a carnivore dinner. You know, it just, it really is just a, a, a bunch of meat and steak and stuff like that. And so, and for a lot of carnivores, it doesn't qualify because of like you know a sauce or something like that. Um, how it, and then our carb is bad. I just, I think we all probably consume too many carbohydrates. I think they make you feel tired and they make you hungry and they fuck with our endocrine system more than we think they do. Um, uh, but you know, like I love a good piece of bread as much as the next guy. I just try to limit them. Hey, before I get canceled, bread is delicious. I, I can confirm. <laughs> All right, next one. All right. Uh, it's kind of, you know, you, you've you introduced me to a lot of good good different meats at a beefsteak. So what's your favorite meat? Is it is it just the cow or is there something more uh, exotic that is your favorite meat? Oh, cow is pretty consistently delicious. I think it's uh, – I, I do like 
I like, you know, I like it all. Um, but I would say just like nine times out of 10, I, I'm, I'm probably reaching for beef before other things. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think me it's, it, it's also more accessible, right? Like it's just, it can be really hard to get good lamb or something like that. Like it's, it's easy. It's becoming easier and easier to get really good beef um, that was raised well and is delicious. Well, perfect segue. We got Mr. Robot in the chat. He is a, a beef initiative maxi. So where do you source the beefs? Do you have, you have connects? Are you using, have you used beef initiative? I know uh, he's huge on pushing people towards the beef initiative or, or just ethically raised beef. Yeah. So it, it's, it's always different. Um, it depends on like the, the venue of the place that I'm doing it, where I'm doing it. Um, and, like next week, I'm going to do one in Austin, um, and I'll get all, almost all my beef from coal. Um, so KNC cattle, they're awesome. He accepts Bitcoin. His product is delicious. Um, when I, I'm trying to think, like last, last beef steak I did was in Wyoming. Uh, that's what this hat's from. We, we got a bunch of uh, bison from a ranch out there. But the thing is, is like you have to go through because of where I'm doing it, I have to go through these big purveyors. They're still getting it from small farmers, but that's just kind of the only way I can get it. Um, so I, I I like to get it from ranchers when I can. Um, I think often the product is better. One one problem is, you know, I'll need a, a lot of something. Um, you know, I'll be like, I need 150 pounds of ribeye. That's hard for some small ranchers to do. Um, and the beef steak, it's not really conducive to like getting a half of a cow because every muscle kind of requires a different attention. It would just be like an insane amount of work. I mean, it would be fun to do, um, and it's and it would save money on beef, but it that money saved would come back, you know, in labor. So it wouldn't really save the customer money; it just saves me money on beef. <laughs> Wow, we we eat 150 pounds of ribeyes at a beefsteak, or or more. Am know, like <laughs> amazing! Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Yeah. Next question. Uh, I'm gonna ask you some favorite cuts based on bull and bear market. So, what's your favorite cut yeah. of steak during the bear market? Yeah, you know, I know everyone's out there is on a budget, but they still want to eat good. Yeah, I mean, a flat iron steak for me is huge. I think flat iron is really tasty and tender. Um, there's another one called. Petite tenders, which or some butchers call them terrace major. It looks like a little tenderloin. It's probably like five or six inches long. And uh, you can't overcook it. It's not a very forgiving piece of steak. But if you just, if you hit that like rare, medium, rare mark, it is really tasty. And and you've had those at beef steaks for sure. Let's um, go. I okay. Get, I always get them when I can. All right. So the next question, similar in vain, what is your favorite cut? in the bull market when price isn't a worry? Is it a ribeye or is there something else that you think is the best cut of meat, no matter what? I think it's probably ribeye. Probably ribeye? Okay. Yeah. And then after that, it's like, get it from a, you know, get some kind of fancy prime, prime dry age, you know, like all that stuff I think makes a difference. And I love all that. Perfect. All right. Now, now this is the tough one. I know this one's a little more subjective, but what is the perfect doneness on a steak? Are you, you like it still bleeding? You like your steaks well done? No, I know you don't. Medium rare. What What do you think is the the gentleman's take on what their steak should be? I think it, I think it depends a lot on the cut. Like uh, for that ribeye, I think a ribeye kind of needs to be medium rare, maybe even creeping up on medium. Um, the center, you know, you know, it has that center part and that out that part that wraps around the outside. That part that wraps around the outside, it's kind of not good when it's raw or when it's raw or rare. Um, so for that reason, I think it's got to go like a little bit over. But for something like those Terrace Major, that stuff can just be rare. Like I don't even mind if it's like a little bit cool inside. Um, so I'd say depends on the cut. The softer the meat, the rarer it can be. Um, the more the muscles used, the more you kind of want to cook it through a little bit. Oh man, I'm getting so hungry. All right, next one, next one. Uh, what's your favorite salts to put on 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 your steak? Is there like a certain kind salt. of salt that you use? I use kosher salt before cooking and Malden afterwards. 
I like right. like Celtic Celtic salt too. Um, I like that stuff. I like a big crunchy flaky salt afterwards. I am getting so hungry. All right, this one's this one's for my personal friends. This might be a, a little bit of a jab at my friends. Uh, what's your thoughts on a meat thermometer? Oh, I, I'm I think a meat thermometer is essential. I love a meat thermometer. I'm big on it because that's like you don't. I don't want to leave it to 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 guess. You know, like you think you think you know, and then you're tired, and then someone hands you a beer, and then like I can't find my cigar, and then like the steak is overcooked, um, and that's not okay. But I'm speaking from like a professional. You know, like it has to be right. I think I think uh, everybody should have a meat thermometer, and you don't need like a good one is like sixteen bucks. You know, you can get a, like a electronic one from Amazon for sixteen bucks. And I'll post a link to that one that I get in the on the Twitter thing. Cause it's just like you put it in there and it just, the nicer ones are nice. They're not that much more accurate, but they read, they read faster. Um, and that's when you, when you spend a bunch of money, you don't need to spend a bunch of money. Just get that $16 one, have some extra batteries around and you're good to go. What, what, I just want to know what, what, uh, like, school were you in there were you, were you well pro i i have pro? just i have literally just become a pro meat thermometer maxi but uh i have i've always been a neanderthal when it comes to my meat and i'm just like i have an in- instinctual instinct and i know when it's the perfect the perfect steak and i just like kind of timed it so i would usually just do like a couple of minutes you know a couple minutes on each side and then uh my friend joe rogers you know joe rogers yeah, yeah. uh he has hipped us to the meat thermometer and i would kind of make fun of one of my roommates and be like dude look at this guy meat thermometer using and we just like make fun of him because he's so technical and nerdy about it but I've, I've, you know, I've become a meat thermometer maxi. I still don't know how to use it. I'm still stuck in my ways of like, okay, I just time it five minutes on each side should be good to go. And, uh, Hey, it's a little, if it's a little rare for me, I'm okay. Sometimes I need that like very, very animalistic, just like I'm eating my steak because I made it and I already took it off the pan. I'll tell you where it like comes in and I don't want to, I want to, I want to show you another trick. I'll tell you where it comes in. is like when you buy a $100 steak, um, you just don't want to risk it. Or I don't anyways, you know, like, and I, and I say that because I've totally torched more than my fair share of really expensive meat. Um, And it just gets frustrating. It creates more work and it's wasteful. Um, So I say get the meat thermometer. It just saves you the, the trouble. It's not like you're less skilled if you're using a meat thermometer you still have to cook the steak well. um so here's the other thing this is like the great this is like the italian grandma trick so if you take your hand and you relax it you touch right here my hand's disgusting i've been like playing with a pen one you touch right here sorry i gotta make sure it's in the screen you touch right here while your hand is relaxed this is what raw meat should feel like um and then you touch your fingers together and as you touch your fingers together you flex this muscle um, and that then it becomes like rare, uh, medium rare, and you feel your muscle tense up as you go across, and then it's like medium and medium well. And by the time you get over here, it, it's like feeling pretty hard. Um, so are you, did you try it? You gotta guys, do it. A yeah, steak master, yeah, bro. I did. Honestly, a waist slice. I'm so glad you uh, you did that because I I told my parents that exact same thing, and their mind was blown. And ever since you showed <laughs> me that on the grill, I like I always think about it. But I remember you telling me it's like, look, don't quote me on this. So you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like this is yeah. just a basic heuristic, guys. But ever yeah. since you told me that, I, I like I was gonna bring it up right now, and I didn't want you to like, you know, be like, no, let's not talk about that. Yeah, but I, I always show people that, and then I'm like, but you should get a meat thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, can here. you can do this, but get a meat thermometer. Yeah. Be, get a yeah. meat thermometer. Anyways, everybody, let's get to the memes. We got a lot to talk about. Let's check it out. The Daily Meme Review. Brought to you by Kaboom Racks. I get this question all the time. Nico, where should I buy Bitcoin miners? The answer is Kaboom Racks. It's the best place to buy Bitcoin miners. That's where you're going to find the best deals and the best prices. Start your mining utopia today. To check out their racks, you got to go to t.me slash Kaboom Racks. Join their Telegram group and start your mining journey today. Kaboom Racks. 
<laughs> Man, I am so hungry. I still got to go to the gym and I want to eat a steak now. Anyways, anyways, this is me just being hungry. Uh, this is the meme review. This is your favorite portion of the show where we rate your memes. Tag me in the memes on Twitter. Hit us in our Telegram with the memes and we will get them on the show. As we say every single day, we are in an information war. Tweets are the bullets. Memes are the artillery. Continue to put truth in art and spread the signal. Get the calls of action out there. Get people stacking. And as you can tell, I am leaning into the fact that everything might be blowing up right now, and we have cheap sat. So, shouts out to Wicked Smart Bitcoin, aka at W underscore S w underscore Bitcoin. And we got what are these Oryx from Lord of the Rings? Looks like cheap sats are back on the menu, boys. Looks like we are having a fire sale on Bitcoin. So, hopefully, you guys are stacking. And another one in the same vein by at Maxi's Club. And he just goes 309, the 309 meme that he's created. And we got a little Pepe Bitcoiner and he's pushing the Bitcoin logo and goes, come on, do something. And then he's freaking out. He's like, no, no, not like that. Ah! And that's because the Bitcoin price is dumping. This is how we all feel when the price goes sideways. We, Wait, we just. One second. What, what is that? It says 309 out of 2100. Is he just going to quit when he gets to 2100? Happened, I don't know. Is that what you're doing, Maxi's Club? This is wow. Big if true. It, you need to go to 21 million. What are you doing? I don't know. We'll have to uh we'll have to bring them on and we'll talk about that. Okay, this next one. As I've been saying, crazy stuff in traditional markets right now, not only in the Bitcoin market, but in all markets. It looks like maybe the financial system is blowing up. And uh, we're here for it. And it's almost like Bitcoin was designed for this very moment. But shouts out to Fiat Denier, a.k.a. at Pop Melancholic on Twitter. He's one of our biggest critics on the Twitter spaces, but also a friend. And we got the, the little African boy giving the Western lady a side eye. And he goes, so you bought Bitcoin in case the banks fail and you're selling now because a bank failed. It makes no sense to me. Banks are failing. There's bank runs on the banks, and you guys are selling your Bitcoin. This is literally why you hold Bitcoin is because you don't trust the banks, and now you're getting shook out because the price is going down. It makes no sense to me. Anyways, again, on the same vein, we got at Beaver Bitcoin underscore, and it goes, no, you never sell your Bitcoin. You only buy more, and we got the classic e-girl – goth e-girl yelling at her Chad Bitcoin boyfriend in the price. We got, uh, you know – the uptrend right here. And she goes, babe, please sell your Bitcoin. We're millionaires. And we got the Chad Bitcoiner with laser eyes and the Bitcoin center goes, no, you never sell your Bitcoin. You only buy more. Have you bought the dip Anon? Are you buying this Bitcoin? Because you really, really should. This next one. All right. I hope you guys have seen Margin Call. If you haven't seen Margin Call, watch it this weekend and you can get an inside <laughs> view. Get, of ready, what is get ready for next week by watching yeah. Margin Call next it, this week. Right. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to see exactly what this next week is most likely going to play out. Don't don't quote me on this. Don't hold me to it. But. I'm, I can when only pay imagine group. when pay group opti. soon, soon, uh, hit my DMS. I'll give you a course. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we're joking. All right. Um, so Silicon Valley bank, it literally just got stopped. It blew up. And if you've seen margin call, then you know, this scene, and this is a thread that I saw on Twitter kind of explaining what exactly is happening. Not going to go into the thread, but the meme here is Silicon Valley bank execs today. And it's that point in the movie where they tell the executives of the bank to sell it all today. And we are seeing this happen, not only in the Bitcoin space, but in traditional banks right now. So, Hey, I think next week we're going to see a lot of fireworks and then on the same vein, uh, I know this is in a meme yet, but I think this is a funny, funny context for the final meme. So this is at not grubbles. And he goes, today is the day that JPEG pushes revert back to principled Bitcoinary TM trademark in light of banking failures. You know, the reason Bitcoin exists in the first place. This is why Bitcoin was created in the first place. So you shouldn't be scared at all. And this is the meme. And the reason I put the not grubbles on it is just to give perfect context to this meme by Internet Hall of Fame. And it goes, the human brain is the most outstanding organ in the body. It works 24 hours a day, 365 days a year from birth up until the moment you buy your first NFT. <laughs> Hold Bitcoin, save in Bitcoin, avoid stupid games and win stupid prizes. Okay, guys, so drop your meme review score in the chat and we will 
cover them live. Yes, Vake, this is simply Bitcoin homework. Watch Margin Call this weekend and cook yourself a delicious steak. This is your homework for the weekend. Okay, my meme review score, Nico, is this Bitcoin hat that I was given. I I, I think it was BTC pins. I forget who gave it to me. Shouts out to you, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm going to give it Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. very nice. If you know, you know. It's a Miami B steak hat for the audio listeners. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna do this. This is like my favorite new possession. It's a tiny little <laughs> what dumpster. is that thing? <laughs> it's a tiny little dumpster. I should have put like a little candle in there or something. We could have a dumpster fire. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. That's hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, all right, guys, this is Simply Bitcoin Live. Drop your meme score in the live chat and we will get to it. But before we do that, we want to give a shout out to our awesome clothing sponsor, representltd.com. Opti and I wear the merch every single day. The Simply Bitcoin hat is sold out. I'm wearing the camo hoodie. You There's guys snapbacks, know. though. No dad hats. There's still the some snapbacks. Left. Anyway, you could use promo code simply dash Bitcoin, get yourself a 10% discount, anything on the representltd.com store. So definitely, definitely check it out. Don't sleep on it because it's almost sold out. Anyways, Opti, cue the music and let's start going through some of these. Mike Denver, I give the memes a 1.76% inflation rate. Oh, if you know, you know, Mike, Mike knows. Matthew C, I gave the memes Opti giving Liz Warren his private key and seeds. I, I didn't read that one. <laughs> Victor Salazar, Simply Bitcoin, I give the memes USDA Prime Badge. Next one, Bitcoin Becca, I give the memes more cheap sats. I like that. I like that. Moving on to the next one, Mr. Robot, I rating, rate the memes one Maxi's Club pin from BTC Pins. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can read this one, Nico, but hey. I can't read that. Next one. <laughs> All right, uh, you deserve real money. I score the memes, the smoke I'm smelling off the banking sector. Oof. 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 All right, next one. The, the music is increasing in volume. SpongeBob SquarePants, my meme score is pulling a steak out of porky hands. All right, next one, next one. The John Flood, I word the memes, a porterhouse steak cooked Pittsburgh style with a large glass of claret. Regards, John. Okay, okay, okay. Had too much fun. Last one. Matthew C., I give the memes the Bitcoin white paper. Also, guys, check out Simply Bitcoin's Telegram group. It's absolutely free. Go to www.t.me slash Simply Bitcoin TV. And also check out the written version of this show. Go to simplybitcoin.news, Simply Bitcoin Unfiltered. Definitely don't want to miss that. Also, shout out to our audio listeners from Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Fountain. The audience has been growing as of late. So very, very grateful for you guys. And Opti finally I, remembered. I finally remembered. I finally remembered. He, he, almost he has, forgot. Uh, he, has, uh, he has some sats that were streamed, bro. I almost forgot, but appreciate I remembered. Appreciate you all, that. too, because we're, yes. we're in the top 50 on Fountain. So love you all oh, and appreciate it. Appreciate the love and support for sure. Okay. All right. So I got a few of them. Uh, I might have missed some. I apologize. I scrambled to at least get you these ones. So first, we got some stream sats by MA underscore 21 M0 on the Luke Broyles. You ain't bullish enough, IRL. The next one, again, some more stream sats on the Luke Broyles episode by Kelsey Toy 73 Really appreciate it. This next one, we got a rag three underscore af on episode 692 breaking largest shitcoin bank collapses uh bitcoin wins let's see this next one we got some stream sats by clark ian again on episode 692 and then this last one we got some stream sats on the luke broils by a hurley burt thank you guys on- Simply thank, Bitcoin IRL. Thank you guys for all the support and appreciation. We we love you guys. And Opti will continue to remember to read them on Friday. I also want to give a shout out to our very special guest, Away Slice. Thank you so much for joining us on Simply me. Bitcoin today. Why don't you tell everybody where they could find you online? I'm Away Slice on Twitter. Away Slice, like the opposite of home slice. Awesome. So the op. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Can I ask you how you came up with that? Yeah, uh, it's just like, you know, like you have in sports, you have a home game and you have an away game. Um, 
and then I, you know, like everybody used to say home slice. Um, so I was like, if you have a home game and away game, you can have a home slice and an away slice. Um, and then that's part of the reason I use Homer as my, as my avatar. It's like, it's not Homer. It's away. Or <laughs> Anyways, thanks man so much for, for joining us today, guys. That was our show. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to smash that like button, consider subscribing. If you feel like we provided you value, but the number one thing you could do to help this show, in fact, spread, help spread the peaceful revolution is share this video. No, don't just share this video, share all Bitcoin content. The party continues all the way to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are hosting a space with our friends over at Swan Bitcoin, best place to stack sats built by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners. If you haven't already done so, check out swan.com today and check out their new offering, swan.com slash IRA. Anyways, everybody, we love you. We will see you back on Monday for a brand new episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. <laughs>